call the May 9th, 2022 meeting of the Henry County Board of Supervisors to order. This meeting has a specific purpose. It's a uh, public, we have two public hearings tonight, uh, for the one for the school budget and one for the total county budget. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, remind you on our regular meetings, if you want to uh, address the board, you sign up seven days in advance of uh, any meeting and contact the county administrator's office. However, uh, tonight during the public hearing, if you wish uh, to address the board, I'm going to read a brief statement. There will be a time for public comment during those, uh, uh, and it will be identified as to which subject you're commenting on. We'll welcome your participation in tonight's meeting. We're here to listen to you. If you care to address the board, come to the podium, state your name and the district in which you live. By coming to the podium, you've agreed that you will exhibit respect for the board and its members and the staff. You will receive the same consideration from the board and staff. And please try to keep your presentation uh, in the uh, area of three minutes. Prior to starting with our public hearing tonight, uh, Ms. Buchanan, I believe that you have a proclamation for the board's consideration tonight. Yes, Mr. Chairman. This is a proclamation of the Henry County Board of Supervisors recognizing Emergency Medical Services Week. Whereas emergency medical services of Henry County is a vital public service, and whereas the members of Henry County emergency medical service teams are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury, and whereas the emergency medical service system of Henry County consists of emergency medical technicians, paramedics, emergency medical dispatchers, firefighters, educators, and administrators. And whereas the members of Henry County emergency medical services teams, whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing education to enhance their life-saving skills. And whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value and the accomplishments of emergency medical services providers by designating Emergency Medical Services Week. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Henry County Board of Supervisors that on the ninth day of May 2022, it does hereby proclaim May 15th through the 21st, 2022, as Emergency Medical Services Week in Henry County. With the theme, Rising to the Challenge, Henry County does express its gratitude to the men and women who serve as members of the emergency medical service system serving Henry County and encourages all other organizations and media to express appreciation to our responders. And this is signed Jim Adams, Chairman, Henry County Board of Supervisors. Mr. Chairman, I move that we adopt this proclamation. Second. Sure. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? It is 6-0, Jennifer. <coughs> and upon the adoption of this, um, our uh, public safety uh, director, uh, Matt Tatum, said that he will forward a copy of this to all the uh, different providers uh, in the county. And Matt, thank you for doing that. Yes, sir. Thank you. That takes us to agenda item number five, uh, public hearing for proposed FY 2022-2023 school budget. Mr. Hall. Uh, you have in your budget book uh, a staff recommendation for school budget. Uh, we only have nothing to add. Clearly, uh, one of your agenda items that's uh, on this agenda is number seven. At that point, we will take your input on any changes that you want to make. I really have that. We can put that <coughs> Okay, we will open this public hearing at 7.03 to take any input, and this is for the school budget for the FY 2022-2023 school budget. Is there anyone wishing to address the board in regard to the school budget? Anyone at all? Seeing and hearing no indication as such, 
I will close uh, the public hearing on this at 7.03. That takes us to agenda item number six, public hearing for proposed FY 2022-2023 total county budget. Mr. Hall. Um, essentially the same. Uh, we presented this as part of the total budget. Uh, you have that in front of you. You've uh, worked uh, on it during the work session. And we presented to you as uh, essentially we presented it to you that day. I will open the uh, public hearing to take input on the uh, proposed FY 2022 2023 total county budget. Is there anyone wishing to address the board on this? I see a couple of hands. I've already read our policy statement. Uh, Mr. Ward, uh, if you want to uh, come forward. Thank you very much for this opportunity to speak. Uh, you probably, you recall that I came before you before and showed you the, uh, all the wonderful things that the library system has been doing through during the past year or two during the pandemic. So I won't rehash all of that. Uh, just to quickly touch on it, during the pandemic, we did, did go to curbside service and that tried to serve our public as best we could. During the time we were closed, we did reopen the library on June 21st of 2021, and we've been back to normal hours ever since. Um, this was a difficult time for our staff. We had to sort of pivot and do something we'd never done before. And our staff worked really hard to do that and so what I'm here for tonight is to encourage you to give us the increase that we're asking for so that we can give our staff hard-working staff a raise uh, one of the things the difficulties that we're running into is minimum wage will be rising to $12 an hour in January that's going to put us in a crunch which will also cause us to start having salary compression whereas someone who's been working at the library for 20 years will be making almost the same amount as someone who is possibly a newcomer and working part-time. And this makes it difficult to keep good, hardworking people. We've even lost one of our master degree certified uh, librarians to the Martinsville City Schools, which is kind of a shock to me. But uh, that just shows that we are on the lower side of the salary range. Uh, and since 2019 to now, we've received level funding from the county uh, with inflation going to between six and 8%. This puts a crunch on not only the library and what it can purchase and what it can afford, but also our hardworking staff who have to make a living so that they can live as well. I noticed on the way over here, gas prices have gone to 419 a gallon. And that, that hurt, especially trying to get to and from work. Uh, <clears throat> we noticed that Henry County was able to give their staff a 5% raise this year. There's a proposed 6% raise in their budget for them next year. And we would just like to ask that you increase our contribution so that we can give our staff a 5% raise as well. An increase would be 39,427, or about 5.36 percent over what we're currently receiving this year, for a total of 774,968. That's for li three library branches, and so uh, what we do is we split the system costs. We have 20 percent to each branch, with three in Henry County. That would be 60 percent of the system cost. And this increase is just uh, in the current annual budget of Henry County, it's 0.05% of what we currently, the county currently has in its budget. So I respectfully ask that you give us the increase we've asked for so that we can give our staff a raise as well. And I thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, I'll answer them now. Can you repeat the amount you mentioned some amount. The total amount or yes, percentage sir. increase? Amount. Total amount. Yes, sir. It'd be 774968 And then what are you asking? That's what I'm asking for now. Seven. Seven seven four nine six eight. Which is an increase of thirty nine four twenty seven over what we received this year. Or a five point three six percent increase. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. I saw this lady's hand. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. 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 Thank from me on behalf of the board, each of you individually, just a couple of weeks ago. I just want to reiterate um, the fact that the three localities, Henry County, Martinsville, and Patrick County, comprise 74% of the budget. 74%. Now your percentage of our total budget is 41%, but 74% means that is the local amount. And you may recall that ever since Benjamin Franklin started the first library in Philadelphia, that the locality has had the responsibility of the library system ever since then. Secondly, I want to mention that 74% of the budget means that we cannot give our people a raise unless the local governments give our, us an increase. We just cannot do it. Now you see us, see the library, I think, as a semi-outside agency. But I say that our library employees are your employees the same as the school system. It's just you get a break because the state and federal government give a little bit to make up the difference. But 74% of the budget is what we need to be increased so that we can help our people. And that's not even getting into um, infrastructure needs. You know, I know one library has a carpet that's uh, 25 years old. So we need to uh, increase the support for our library and especially for our staff. Our part-time staff, especially those in an entry-level position, can make more money going to McDonald's or to Walmart. And these are people who are trained and our master's degree people and our people with doctorates deserve the same pay as a school teacher who has those degrees. Because the library is an extension of your educational system and educational of the Henry County and Patrick County and Martinsville City school systems. We provide lifelong learning and you've seen through Rick's presentations and other times I and others have spoken to you all the many things that libraries do, uh, still do. And the fact that librarians have a, such a wealth of knowledge that they are absolutely uh, the best search engine. You know, if you go on uh, Google and try to look something up, you get 25,000 or 50,000 responses and you're sitting there saying, you know, how do I find factual information, verifiable information, the best information? Well, ask a librarian and they'll be able to help you. And they do day in and day out. If you sat in one of our libraries and observed what the librarians do to help the citizens of Martinsville and Henry County from infants and preschoolers all the way up through senior citizens like myself, you would think that they are some of the hardest working people you've ever seen. So I implore you to support this increase in the library budget. <coughs> and to look ahead to next year as well. Because as Rick has already said, our people are already behind in terms of getting an equitable, fair salary for the work that they actually do. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to address the board on the total county budget? Yes, ma'am. I saw your hand and I saw another hand back there. Oh, uh, this lady over here, yes. And then uh, Ms. Vessel, I saw your hand next. Yes, that's okay. My granddaughter would like to speak as well when I'm done. If that's okay, she's nine though. Um, my name is Crystal Holloway and I'm from the Bassett area and I just wanted to tell you a little bit about what the library means to us. 
Um, my family and I love and enjoy our local library and staff there. For us, the library is more than just a place that has books. Our library has many activities for the kids, like movie time, Lego night, read to the <coughs> hall, and many others keep, to keep the children engaged. Story time is one of our favorites. For my homeschoolers, story time is where they meet and make friends, learn songs and dance around, listen to books, be read, and make crafts. But most of all, they have fun. The library staff has played a big part in my children learning and loving to read books. My teenager has volunteered during the summer at our library, and this experience has helped her prepare for future jobs, and also the staff have been wonderful mentors to her. This was just a few reasons why we love our library. Vestal. Mr. Chairman, thank you. My name is Sherry Vestal. I represent the Blackberry District for the Library Board, and I, just like the ones in front of me, are really um, begging you to consider giving the request that the Library Board has requested. Um, now that I'm a grandmother times two, um, I get to see a lot firsthand of the wonderful things that all of the libraries are responsible in doing for our children, but especially the Bassett Library because, like I said, that's where I live. It's wonderful for all the children to be able to interact and learn all that they can possibly learn at the library, and the staff there are so accommodating and just wonderful. My sister-in-law has just retired as being the head librarian at Northwestern State. And when I shared with her one evening what our librarians make, she was like, oh my goodness, I didn't, that's like poverty level. So um, after going to Walmart yesterday and finding out that my pink eggs that I like to buy that are normally 91 cents are now 3.89. You know, the price has, of everything is really, really going up. And so please consider the request and it would be very appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. Yes, ma'am, I saw your hand. Hi, my name is Amy Bunn. I'm a resident of the Iriswood District and the branch librarian for the Ridgeway Library. I hadn't planned on speaking, so bear with me, but uh, if a nine-year-old can come up and speak for us, I think we can manage to speak for ourselves as well. I wanted to give you, let me take this off, give you an idea of what it's like um, as somebody that works in the library. Um, my salary is not fantastic. It is a livable salary. Uh, I do make less than most people with master's degrees do, and I'm okay with that. I love my job and what I do. What's hurting me right now is at the Ridgeway Branch Library, we have me and two part-time staffers holding the library together. And when I hire a part-time staffer, I need somebody that can do children's programming, order books, research on the internet, uh, help patrons at the computer, and is trustworthy because they're working with money. Uh, we do have a lot of times where the library is covered alone and so they have to work independently as well. And when it comes to all this, when I'm trying to hire somebody for this job, I can offer them $11 an hour minimum wage. And that hurts because the only way that I can manage to keep the staff on hand is to have somebody who's really dedicated to the idea of a library. And I have that staff right now, and I've been fortunate to have that in the past. But there are always things in life that come up. You know, somebody's spouse loses a job, or someone else suddenly needs health insurance, and they're having to go elsewhere. And when they do that, I've lost, you know, 
a third of my staff and everything gets torn up. The story times, I've got to start again. The, the children have to get used to a new story time person. And it's just so frustrating. And you know, it's just going to get worse over the years, you know, especially lately when, as she said, as Ms. Kelva Cardwell said, Walmart hires for more than we can pay our staff right now. And I have respect for the work that those people are doing at Walmart. I know it's not an easy job. But I'm asking for a certain level of skills, too, that the people stocking the shelves at Walmart don't need to have. And when I can pay $2 less an hour than they do, <coughs> it's not right. It's not fair. Um, I know, as Ms. Cardwa also said, we are a separate entity, and it's easy to see us as once removed. But I had people that I was talking to before this, and they said, oh, well, you're getting a raise because you're a Henry County employee. And I said, no, we're not. But that's what the people see us as. And so I want to remind you of that and, and that we are working on behalf of Henry County every day in our jobs. We love what we do, but don't ask us to sacrifice a living wage for that. So I am requesting that you do up our funding. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to address the board? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Good evening, my name is Karen Barley. I am the Blue Ridge Regional Library uh, Branch Manager for Bassett Branch. I have to, first of all, thank my loyal library patrons who decided to come tonight, from Crystal and her granddaughter, Heaven, to um, Stephanie Kendrick, as long with my staff members, Betty Wall and Hilda Shields. The library is important to our community. We are the heart of our community, per se. For everything from helping with simple tasks from making copies to helping people fill out applications to help get jobs and for the past four to five years we have been keeping track of the number of jobs that we have helped get for people in the area and each month we do a statistical count for our director that shows those people who have gotten jobs in Henry County and Martinsville because of needing help so many things from social security applications to job applications are online. Many of our senior citizens do not have the knowledge to do what they need to do online. We're constantly helping patrons. Although we cannot enter their personal information, we lead them step by step in filling out those applications to get their social security benefits to get a replacement driver's license, to get a replacement social security card and a birth certificate for their child who needs to go to school. We eagerly help each and every one, but we would love to be able to do more. As Amy says, in two of our Henry County branches, we run on one full-time branch manager and only part-time help. So when one of us has to be out, it's detrimental to the whole staff. And we would just like to be able to reward each and every staff member, those part-time people who come in every day to help us maintain our library so that we can offer all of the services that we do offer to our staff. So thank you. Thank you. Sir, anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Good evening, my name is Betsy Haskins. I'm a proud resident of Henry County and Mr. Garrett Dillard is my representative. Yes, I am honored to be chairman of the board of trustees of the library. And we are here in numbers as you can see because we are very afraid of what you are doing. These libraries are free to the public. When people come to look at Martinsville and Henry County, they want to know where the library is. They want to go see it. They want to see what is offered. So it's not just a book thing. It is positive for all the localities to have a strong library system that is successful, that uh, responds to the needs of the specific area and community and the whole state. Libraries serve everybody, from the smallest children to the oldest person. When COVID was at its worst, our librarians trotted in and out the back door with, with supplies, 
for anybody who wanted something. That's going far beyond something that is, it's not in the job description because they don't need to have that. They see what needs doing and they do it in all of these branches. If there is a special program, they're not paid extra for unlocking the, ch unlocking the library, for setting up um, the audio, the microphones, the chairs, the table for snacks. They do it, and then when it's over, you can imagine who cleans up and locks up and goes home. They don't complain. That's just part of what being a librarian is. It takes, as I'm sure you understand, a very special person to be a librarian, to be a giver, to always be looking for something that would help someone. It, it's very heartfelt for me. Um, I hope I'm not asking, but I hope that each of you all have attended and go and use your library. If you haven't, I heartily ask you to do so because when you get there, you'll feel the vibe that is there. The happiness, crinkling of papers, looking for books, toys being checked out. The library is not the one that I grew up with 50 years ago. It is a multi-purpose entity and if they're not doing it now and it's something that you want or need, they will be on it. I can guarantee that. There's so much I understand that competes for these monies. But please remember that the libraries are for everybody and it doesn't cost them us. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else wishing to address the board on the total county budget? Yes, sir. Mr. Vice, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman, and all the board supervisors, I just want to address y'all tonight. Just to thank you for uh, the support you've shown to the Anchor Commission over the last 50 years. And yes, you heard me correct. This is our 50th anniversary this year. And the support that you've given us, uh, that Henry County has given us over the years, has not only allowed us to run a group home and now a shelter care, we also provide a myriad of other services as well. We have two substance use disorder programs that we found other funding sources for. Uh, we also have a uh, agreement we do with Henry County Public Schools for part of the, some of their students there at one of our facilities. And it's all because of the support you've given us over the years. And I can't say thank you enough. And uh, I'm proud to say I'm a new Henry County resident now. So I, I, I keep up with what y'all do quite a bit. But thank y'all again. Thank you for your support, and I greatly appreciate it. Is there anyone else wishing to address uh, the board on the t total county budget? Seeing and hearing no indication as such, I will close the uh, public hearing on the total county budget at 727. That takes us to agenda item number seven. If there, uh, Mr. Hall, do you have any comment on consideration of any proposed budget changes? Uh, this, you know, we say repeatedly that once staff presents you with a recommended budget, it is your budget. The staff will take direction in any way you wish us to go. To move forward, so uh, we are really here to, uh, to do whatever you want us to do. All right, with that, I'll have <coughs> board members, uh, and uh, I'll just start on the end with Mr. Zayer. Do you have anything uh, this time? No, I'm just looking over the numbers real quick. Uh, so if you can circle back, that would probably be best. Okay. Mr. Well, of course, this is my, Mr. First, my yes, first opportunity to do this. You know, we have our conversations tonight, but if we later see that we may want to propose changes, is that possible, or does that have to take place at this very moment? Generally, we take your direction tonight to move toward appropriation at the March 24th meeting. May, May 24th. Hey, behind the times. Uh, May 24th meeting. Uh, normally, that's when you would appropriate the budget. 
any changes under the total amount that you wish us to bring to you that day, uh, uh, we, you know, we can do that. But the way the schedule is set up, um, we're due to appropriate this month, uh, I mean, adopting this month, appropriate in June, uh, effective July 1. So um, the window is narrow. Uh, if you wish to stay below the overall advertised budget and direct us to, for instance, to fill a gap uh, from some other piece of the budget, uh, we can certainly bring that to you if you wish. But the overall number is pretty much what it is unless you want to go higher than that. And then basically you start this whole process of a uh, new public hearing, a new presentation of the budget, all that has to start over if you go above the number that we've advertised. So in essence, you don't have to have a final number tonight if somebody proposes we to go to above it. Now how you manipulate I'm saying that. tonight. Um, we can take direction on that, I believe, right? It's all about the time. So okay. if you can get it all done and do all those steps before June 30th, then you certainly can make changes. Okay. Anything at that number that you advertise or below, and you, with your directive on how to take money from here to put it here, um, as long as we have a number that doesn't exceed that advertised number, to adopt in May and therefore appropriate in June, and we can make those changes within within those parameters. Okay. You know, and I, I, I think, Mr. Dillard, you know, one of the things that we look when the budget is that once we get a budget, the budget is set. You know, unless, you know, it goes above it, then like Ms. Tall said, everything has to be redone. So, means we've got the set budget. If you change the budget, you're going to have to take from somebody. I, I you're going to have to take from the service department. You're going to have to take from public safety. You're going to have to take from school board. You're going to have to take from the administration. You're going to have to take from somebody to fill in that void that we're talking about. Uh, you know, the the, uh, the library group tonight has made an excellent point uh, and the need that they need more money and allocation. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what we can do, you know, in it, but I'm sure we're going to take a look tonight when I go home and get my book back out and take another look and see, you know, if there's any way possible. But it's it's hard to change a budget when a budget's set, you know, it just is. Just hate to feel like it's a telemarketer where you have to hear it and mm -hmm. respond to it instantly. You like time to yeah. think through it and look at your options. So that was kind of my question. Just don't want to feel like it's a telemarketer phone call and you got a yes or no right now. Well, I mean, since we presented it. And well, we just heard them tonight. Yes, sir. And, you know, there are parts of the budget that are, are contingency amounts, different cost centers. Mm -hmm. For instance, the Board of Supervisors has a contingency amount. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> we wish to move forward with some changes. From a bookkeeping standpoint, those would be easiest to take money from and put somewhere else. We got 100000 in the contingency and 150000 in the fuel contingency. That's right. Um, that's right. That's right, yeah. So if we wanted to take 39,427 out of and say the fuel contingency and put it towards the libraries to fully fund them and give them raise, we could potentially do that. And if it becomes necessary to go above what remains in the fuel contingency, we can come to you with a we could take it out of the, that time. We could take it out of the reserve fund or something yeah. when it comes to Yeah, yeah, in our contingency that we have, you know, uh, for right. board supervisors. Which we may or may not use, we don't yeah. know, but if we had to potentially use more than what we have in the reserve, we could always take it out of the fund balance at a later date. That would be the cleanest way to do it from right. a okay. yeah. standpoint. Because yeah. it's money in, money out, and it's a contingency. Yeah. So Not changing the money, but pulling money from the contingency. Correct. Yeah. Okay, good stuff. And sooner than we can get that direction, better off. I mean, I, I would be open to doing that because they have had level funding for many years. And just to try to get them up to where they could make a few more dollars, I don't have a problem with that at all. I'd make a motion to make that change if. I need to ask a few questions. This. Okay. Mr. Ward. Could I ask you a few questions? I, I heard some uh, numbers, and uh, you're asking for thirty-nine thousand four hundred and twenty-seven dollars more. I'm sorry. Um, the, the numbers I heard, you were asking for thirty-nine thousand four hundred and twenty-seven dollars more. Yeah. Which, you know, that's you're asking for a five point three percent increase. Part of that is to cover some of the cost increases we expect to incur because of the rise in prices for things like books, supplies, and uh, other things like that, but uh, let me look. I've got it exactly down here. <clears throat> the raise itself would be 
Thirty-one eight eighty-seven thirty-five, and then we're right, how much? Thirty-one. Thirty-one eight eight seven thirty-five will be the raise. Seventy-five thirty-nine twenty-four is the percentage that we think we need to increase uh, for the cost that we're going to incur next year because of inflation. All right. You mentioned that um, Henry County's contribution is forty-one percent. And it, it is. It, the way it works is that each locality is charged with the employees who work for the library in that locality. Well, we, <coughs> excuse me, we also have system costs, which is the cost of uh, the IT supervisor, our catalog, or our collection development person. And all of this is centralized, but all the branches benefit from this. So we take the system cost and because there's five branches in, in the entire library system, we allocate 20% of the system cost to each branch. So Patrick County would have 20%, Marksville would have 20%. Since Henry County has three branches, then that would be 60% of the system cost. Uh, but <clears throat> like I said, we also, uh, let's see, I have a cost benefit analysis, which you should have received with my budget request. Mm -hmm. uh, So like salaries and employee benefits, the direct operating costs are like uh, $298,203 just for the salaries and employee benefits. Uh, then you get into equipment, furniture and fixtures cost mm -hmm. of $83,170. Right. Then it breaks down into internet access, uh, internet access, children's programming services. Then some of the system costs are books, ebooks, binding, microfilm, recording, subscriptions, online resources, some sure. reading. And then we have bibliographic services, which is what we use to catalog the books right. with. All right. And the, they charge us for that. So, <coughs> let me ask you a Excuse question. <coughs> when you're talking about Henry County's contribution and you're needing about $39,427 total, then is it 20% that you're going to be asking for from Martinsville and 20% from uh, It'd be, uh, Patrick it, it County? It comes out to uh, right around 13,000. That would 13,142 is what we're asking for Henry County and Patrick County. Wait a minute. Martinsville. I mean, yeah. Patrick County and Martinsville. That's so, okay. Thank you. So a, a total of 13,142 for Patrick County and Martinsville together combined? No, that's each. Each, okay, all right. And have you presented that to them yet for their I've already presented to them. Uh, Martinsville, I have not heard back from them. Patrick County wanted to cut us 11%. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that was if they had cut us because they're planning to give their staff raises as well, well, there's a code in the Code of Virginia that states if you cut the library and don't cut your departments as well, then we could lose our state aid. Not just a part of it, we could lose all of it. And if we aren't eligible for state aid, we're not eligible for federal funds either, which would be E-rate, which is similar to what the schools get. Libraries and schools get a rebate on what they pay for their internet service. That's based on, sadly, how many reduced and free lunches that are served in each community and in all of our areas all over 100 percent free so we get the highest reimbursement on e-rate at 90 percent but because we've been trying to cut costs with our internet costs when you take the, de the amount down that you're paying for internet then of course the rebate you get is less as well so Currently, like for next year, we're projected to get like $35,000 for E-rate. Uh, we're projected to get right around $369,000 from the state, but that's for all of the library systems. So if they had done that, which thankfully they saw the light and didn't cut us, and they're giving us level funding at this time, that doesn't mean that we can't go back and lobby for more. But if they had done that, we would have lost about $405,000 for the whole library system. And that would have been devastating because we would have been closing branches, we would probably have to take the bookmobile off the road, and we would have had to lay people off. 
So actually, what you're actually needing is sixty-five thousand seven hundred and eleven dollars over all three county, uh, all three jurisdictions. Yes. Is that what I'm hearing? Mm -hmm. uh, the total I can, I think that's right. Something like if something like that. All together, I'm sure you got it right. Okay. So, but I brought all that. <coughs> Uh, 65, 17, 99 is what right. I came mm -hmm. up with. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. The, are the branches based on population? Why has Patrick County just got one and we've got technically four i mean if you look at martinsville and what what we've Phoenix. done in patrick county is patrick county's 486 square miles so it's it's a big county but we also have a bookmobile up there we don't have one here so we used to but when they built i believe it's after they built ridgeway and then bassett merged with the, the system as well then we felt like well I'm speculating. This happened long before I became right. an employee of the library system, but they had a branch in, in, in basically every area of the county, whereas and then in Martinsville it was centralized, and that's our main branch. Well, when they built the branch in uh, Patrick County, then they also had the bookmobile, and it goes to all parts of the county on like a two-week rotating basis. So they go up on the mountain, they go down to Ararat, almost to North Carolina. They come all the way down in Patrick Springs to almost the Henry County line, mm -hmm. Woolwine, Ferrystone. So they go, the bookmobile goes all over the county. That's why we had to get raise funds to get a new bookmobile a couple years ago. And fortunately, the community came together and we were able to raise over $150,000 through the community in like, 18 months so we were very proud of that but people really cherish the bookmobile up there and so that's the main reason that the, it spread out the way it is and the demographics up there are there aren't as many people but they're spread out all over the place i think there's around 17 something in 17 the something yeah, yeah 17 000 something oh, i don't please. know the exact number in Patrick County. So and there's like 50 some thousand in Henry County and I'm thinking 12 in Martinsville, oh, yeah. somewhere yeah. around in there. So that's the reasoning behind that. Are all the branches owned by the library? No, sir. We, uh, <clears throat> we own Ridgeway, we own Bassett, Collinsville is rented, and then uh, Patrick County is actually owned by the county, the building and the land. And Martinsville is owned by this, and the land is owned by Martinsville, right. the buildings. So, so there's a, a we own everything inside of it, and we pay the salaries of the staff and everything like that. There's a monthly rent then for Collins. Collinsville. Yes. So. Okay. May I add the. Um, what I mentioned about the libraries being started, uh, being uh, the responsibility of the local community that it, that is as it is across the United States, but here as in other places, where the libraries are located is largely a function of that neighborhood, that local community, that people got together and petitioned, uh, raised the money for the library long before we had a regional library system. Um, Rick may have the dates in mind about when the various branches started, but it was the local people well, that asked for the library. Right. Well, I knew the ones from Martinsville. Martinsville, well, in the building, it's, it started in 1913 with the uh, Martinsville Women's Book Club. But the building, the original building where the Martinsville Library is now was opened in 1963. They expanded it and it opened in 1986. The building in Patrick County opened in 1991. Amy, when? Uh, it was 20, how, how many? 1990. 1990. 90. So 1990 on Ridgeway, and then you moved across the street when? 
Thank you, Mr. Ward. Thank you. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things that I've heard from each of you, uh, board members, um, you know, we're talking about somewhat the here and now in this budget, but one thing that was mentioned uh, by one of the speakers is future considerations. And salary is a recurring cost. You pay it one year, it comes back again the next year. So that is one of the things that we consider with our own staff, we consider with uh, any uh, promotions, uh, any uh, salary increases within our own staff. And I'm sure that they would have to be looking down the road at that as well um, in a future budget year, not this budget year. But um, with the comments that you all have had, uh, is there a desire of the board tonight? Or do you want to come back after looking at this? Uh, Mr. Jones has brought up a <clears throat> more technical way of processing, right? If you're looking at moving some money around within the number, the most uh, proficient way to do that from a staff's point and also from a legal standpoint is to adopt the budget as presented. Mm -hmm. And then on July 1, once that budget is in effect, you direct us to take X amount of money out of contingency toward that line item. Mm -hmm. That's the cleanest way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so if there is some consideration for doing that, um, we will bring this to you, uh, the May meeting, to adopt as presented. And then you can give us the caveat that on July 1, you want us to transfer X amount of money from whatever pot to whatever pot. That's the cleanest and most efficient way. Yeah, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Does that That'd give us time to find out what Patrick County and That's right. City of Martin is going to do, too. That's right. Does that seem satisfactory to everyone? Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a general consensus by it. So we will bring this to you at your May meeting as presented in this book. Ask you to adopt at that point appropriate at the June meeting, but if you choose to move money around, you can direct us um, as, of as of July 1 to move whatever amount you choose to move from where to where at that point. That keeps the budget process intact, keeps us from having to go back and try to do a lot of juggling, and then it also uh, accomplishes whatever you direct us to do as of July 1. So that I don't lose sight, because we've heard one subject tonight uh, other than the thank you from uh, Mr. Walker. Uh, uh, are there any other um, proposed budget changes? I don't want to lose sight of that. Okay. Seeing no indication and hearing no indication of such, uh, I'll have a, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Have a motion second. All in favor? It's 6 0, uh, Jennifer. Everyone have a good evening. Thank you.